BBC, which I thought was very good. Sorry, which film? Uh, it's called uh, The Virus of Today. Or it may have had a different name here in the U.S. Channel 4, uh, England. You don't remember doing that? What? The, the, <laughs> the, the, fra the phrase is mine, but I don't remember making a film about it. That was very good. You should look it up. Well, I know, yeah, I agree, it'd be great. And, I, and I'd love to do it if there's anyone with 20 or 50 million dollars here who'd like to, uh, to contribute. Uh, I, I, th I think, I mean, both of us do uh, TV. Richard does more film than me uh, in, in, in England, I think. And um, you're absolutely right, the books reach a limited audience. And I don't think film, I actually think television is, reaches the broadest audience. And it, and it really saddens me. And I've had it happen. I, I talk to TV producers a lot. I'm on a lot of TV programs in different ways. But I really would love to get in, in, on, on a mainstream, you know, not the Science Channel, not the, because that's a self-selecting group, or not the Discovery, or, you know, a lot of those places where I normally appear, but in a regular program. But you, it's extremely difficult to convince them that they, and because it's all driven by ratings and money. And the perception of network executives is that science will not draw people in. And it is amazingly, it's a ridiculous perception because if done right, it could be, it could be an incredible draw. Uh, but that's a very difficult thing to overcome. And, um, and you know, I'm hoping that, that, that we can slowly try and overcome it. And I'm trying to do it, but it's, it's a difficult job. I don't know whether you want to... As you say, it, it costs an enormous amount of money. And uh, there have been three very, very major si series that I could think of. Um, one is Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Uh, one is, um, well, David Attenborough's entire corpus, which is, which is unparalleled. Uh, and the other is Jacob, Jacob Bernowski yeah. uh, and uh, The Ascent of Man. Um, and it doesn't look as though the big television companies are putting money into these sort of epic scale. It's just impossible now. now. The, the, the yeah. cost has become so great. I, I, um, Co Cosmos would never be produced today, I think. And it, it's just, a, it's, it's sad, but the costs have escalated. And, uh, but they're great, I agree. I mean, Bernowski's series to me is just, and, and if you compare, and, and it's, and it is amazing, because without special, many special effects, it is riveting. And, and, I, and I was at a, a conference recently of TV producers where I, I brought that, a, a, a clip from that in, compared to a clip in a modern t science production that I won't mention. Um, on the same subject, which had all this animation and everything else, and, and, and Bernowski was much more riveting. And, I, and, and uh, I, I just think, you know, again, it's, we somehow have to convince, it's like politicians. You can only get them to act if you convince them that the electorate is going to, it cares. And we haven't really convinced them that the electorate cares about science issues, okay? And I think the only way to get the networks to act is to convince them that there's an audience. And it's a, you know, it's a chicken and egg thing, but it's going to take a while, but I, I certainly hope um, that we can do it, and I'm going to keep trying anyway. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Mark Rattel, and I'm a reality evangelist. Uh, reality changed my life, and it can change your life too. Uh, the, uh, I'm a, also a seduction time, you know, I think that uh, the pro reality is much more effective in converting winning souls for Darwin than being anti fiction. Because uh, atheism only gets you from negative up to zero. But if you're pro reality, then you, you go on into positive, you know, uh, numbers. And um, I have found that when I talk to religious people, that they're much more interested in what I believe in rather than what I don't believe in. And I think that, um, the, you know, I'm excited about reality. If it wasn't for reality, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> well, it's not so clear. But anyway. Yeah. Focus 
Okay, well, that was a comment. I'll take that as a comment, I think. Me, me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first, I would like to thank you both for this very interesting conversation. I would also point out uh, there's been mentioned several times of uh, perhaps the summer camp teaching uh, evolution and critical thinking, and there is such camp. There are a number of camps across the uh, country called Camp West. West West. West West. I'm really sorry. West. Camp West okay. is the name of it. And Camp Quest West is the California version of it. You can find it online, and they do um, teach free thinking talk. My uh, question has to do with the statement which both of you have used, uh, which is that you don't have to be an atheist to believe in evolution. I want you. I wish you would discuss the use of the phrase "believe." Ah. We don't um, believe in facts. Mm -hmm. They are facts. Um, you have pointed out that, and most of us do understand evolution to be a fact. Belief has such a theological um, tone to it and allows for not believing. And so my question is a good question. Yeah, no, in fact, our, our, our mutual friend Eugenie Scott is here somewhere, I think, from the National Center for Science Education, and she always reminds me that I should never use the word believe um, in, in, in yeah. a scientific context, yeah. and you're absolutely right. Yes, I, I quite agree with that. I mean, I, who was the famous philosopher who, when, when informed that a lady had said, I accept the universe, and he said, by gad, she'd better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my question is um, uh, when science is missing social issues, that I think I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the issues that you guys are facing, but you could at some time prove that uh, if you, um, the consciousness, believe, those are all social issues. We are human and we are social beings. Could you stand a bit further away from the microphone? I think um, she was basically trying to say, how can you teach science as science instead of as a social issue? And I, I, it I, never I, I occurred to me it was a social issue. I, um, who, who thinks science is a social issue? Is it? Well, uh, I mean, I, obviously, for most of the public, they view the evolution intelligent design.